us now discuss minerals and rock resources. In our module 2, Mineral and Rock Resources, at the end of this module, we can identify common rock forming minerals using their physical and chemical properties. Identify the minerals important to society. Classify rocks into igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic rocks. And last, we have to describe how ore minerals are found mined and processed for human use. Rock forming minerals. Minerals are naturally occurring in organic solids with crystalline structures and chemical composition, which may be fixed or vary within certain limits. They are considered natural because they are formed by natural geological process. Minerals are the building blocks of rocks. These minerals undergo different geological processes and become part of development into rock-forming minerals. Not all rocks-forming minerals contain various types and amounts of minerals that may be useful to men. So this explains that minerals are naturally occurring. Natural occurring means that people did not make it, only the environment. Still is an example of a mineral because it is an alloy produced by people. Inorganic means that substance is not made by an organism. For example, the mineral halite, known as rock salt, when it is mined. Why mineral have crystalline structure? Mineral crystals form in many different shapes and sizes. A mineral is made up of atoms and molecules. As the atoms and molecules combine, they form particular pattern. The final shape of the mineral reflects the original atomic shape. Minerals are the building blocks of rocks because rocks are made up of minerals. We have this figure, examples of rock forming minerals, the topaz, the talc, the pyrite, and the quartz. Two groups of mineral resources. The first one is metallic mineral resources, are hard, ductile, malleable, pure substances that are melted to obtain new products. These minerals possesses a metallic luster, contain metals in their composition, and their potential source of metal that can be obtained through mining. Example of metallic mineral resources. Those are gold, iron, silver, copper, lead, zinc, nickel, and aluminum. Metallic mineral resources are also divided into two groups. The ferrous minerals. Minerals that contain iron, for example, are iron ore, manganese, and chromites. Next is non-ferrous minerals, minerals that do not contain iron. Examples are gold, silver, copper, and lead. So in general, they occur as mineral deposits and are a good conductor of heat and electricity. For example, the iron, the copper, they are a good conductor of electricity. They are malleable and ductile in nature, means that malambot at ductile, ibig sabihin malagkit. Malleable means malambot, ductile, ibig sabihin malagkit. They are malleable and ductile in nature so they can be easily pounded into thin sheets or stretched into wires to make new products. They are generally found in igneous rocks that are formed by cooling and solidification of lava or magma. So, saan natin makikita yung lava or magma? Sa true um, eruption of volcano. So, dun halos makikita yung mga distribution ng metallic minerals. Generally, metallic minerals are hard and have a shiny surface. 
so some of them can be used as gems in jewelry. So we have another example of metallic mineral resources. So they are also used in various industries for different purposes. Example, we have the silicon, which is obtained from quartz, and is ext extensively used in the computer industry. We have the aluminum, lead, and mercury. They are also metallic minerals, which is obtained in automobile and bottling industry. Ibig sabihin nito, ang mga bottled water at iba pang plastic products na naitatapon natin sa dagat ay makakasirad sa kondisyon ng yamang dagat. Resulta ng pagkakaroon ng pollution sa tubig dahil ang lead at mercury ay isang uri ng heavy metal na malaking sanhi ng water pollutants at contamination. So, um, we have to consider that using a proper way use of metallic mineral resources will um, prevent or avoid the um, pollution, most especially the water pollution. Okay, let us proceed to non-metallic mineral resources. Non-metallic mineral resources do not have the properties of the metallic minerals and thus can be easily disintegrated or broken into pieces. They are usually associated sedimentary rocks. Examples are coal, clay, salt, and marble. So, on the other hand, non-metallic minerals are a special group of chemical elements from which no new product can be generated if they are melted. Non-metallic minerals are sand, gravel, limestone, clay, clay and marble. Non-metallic um, mineral reserves, uh, reserves consist of quarries of stones and clay and sand. Pits minerals are deposits with a chemical and fertilizer, salt deposits, quartz deposits, and etc. So we have non-metallic minerals um, that are used in industrial purposes. We have non-metallic minerals that provide resources for the construction, chemical, and manufacturing industries. So we have the examples. Sandstones, limestones, and marbles are for building purposes. Glaze, shale for brick making. Salt for the icing roads or human consumption. Gypsum for wallboard. Sand and gravel, potassium gravel, and gemstones. They are used in industrial purposes. So, non-metallic minerals generally found in sedimentary rocks that are formed by aggre aggregation of various materials like minerals, remains of organism, that is why coal and oil are examples of non-metallic mineral also. To classify a mineral resources, the minerals in the rock should be first identified. Minerals can be identified through their physical properties. So we have the first one, the physical properties related to color. Color is the most evident characteristics of and is usually the first property used to identify minerals. It is a result of the way minerals absorb light. So we have the table given in our slides. So we have the list of mineral. Mineral, augite, biotite, calcite, dolomite, feldspar, hematite, hornblende, lemonite, and sulfur. Augite has a mineral color of brown, green, black, and purple. Augite is a rock-forming mineral also that uh, commonly occurs in intermediate igneous rocks, such as basalt, gabbro, and the site in diorite. So they are usually found in uh, the opening of the volcano. So uh, these rocks are, true, um, are found throughout the world. They are found everywhere. So we have also the biotite, black, brown, and green, calcite, pearl sand, and pale colors. We have also the dolomite. The dolomite 
we have colorless. Dolomite is colorless. Uh, pink, sometimes pale or brown. So dolomite, which is mainly used in construction, is also known as calcium magnesium carbonate, is a non-metallic material used in manufacturing bricks, mortar, cement, concrete, and plastics. So dolomite, is, which is mainly used in construction, possesses a risk to humans and aquatic life. And uh, despite our Manila-based um, restoration, we have the issue in dolomite that can harm um, human and aquatic life. We have an example of Ogite's color. So as you can see, um, Ogite's color, they are um, brown, green, black. And we have also the color which is a purple. Next, we have the sulfur. Sulfur is usually, if you look at our table, sulfur is usually pale gold. Okay, sulfur, pale gold. Sulfur is a multivalent, non-metal abundant, tasteless, and in odorless. In its native form, sulfur is a yellow crystalline solid. So, um, according to Robert uh, Linen, he found that sulfur enhances gold's solubility, and solubility is an important step in forming a gold gold deposit. The study of this um, sulfur could lead to breakthrough in choosing geographic targets for uh, gold exploration. We have also the streak. Streak is the color of the mineral and powder form. Usually the mineral is rubbed on a streak plate to determine its color. Okay, as you can see in our image, the um, stone or the rocks are being rubbed in different um, streak plate. The color of the mineral and powder form rub the mineral against a streak plate not always the same as the color so more reliable than color as a means to identify so ibig sabihin ang streak ay isang uri din ng kulay ng isang mineral pero nasa powder form siya ibig sabihin ay lalabas lang ang streak properties ng isang mineral sa pamamagitan ng pagkiskis dito or pagkiskis dito gamit ang streak plate Ang streak plate ay isang uri ng unglazed porcelain na may kakayahan na tukuyin ang tunay na kulay ng isang mineral sa pamamagitan ng pagkiskis dito. We have also the hardness. Hardness refers, uh, refers to the measure of minerals resistance to scratching. To quantify the hardness of a mineral, the most scale is use so we have at the table the first column we have the most relative hardness from 1 to 10 as you can see from 1 to 10 we have also the, the second column of minerals so the most relative um, hardness corresponds to every mineral in the lowest um, form of hardness to the highest the lowest um, hardness is the mineral talc. To the highest, we have a diamond, which means diamond is the hardest in a most relative scale. So we have also the common objects. So as you can see, um, from 1 to 9, we have common objects formed um, through uh, this uh, mineral and at, at the uh, top we have the diamond diamond don't have uh, common objects because it is the hardest elements on earth so um, top has one 
relative hardness gypsum has two calcite three fluorite four apatite five ultraclase feldspar six quartz seven topaz eight corundum nine and diamond is ten talc can be a uh, powder okay yung talc yung ginagamit natin ingredients sa paggawa ng um, yung mga pulbos no yan yung uh, talc natin or yung mga deodorant no minsan may mga talc content din siya gypsum fingernails calcite yung sa tooth or sa ngipin sa fluoride iron nail apatite window glass yan so kung may mga window glass kayo they contain a uh, apatite mineral or to place a uh, feldspar for a steel file um, quartz for porcelain so if you have in porcelain flower base porcelain they are made up of quartz topaz is hardened uh, steel your uh, the common objects hardened steel corundum is uh, sapphire and ruby can be a uh, sapphire and ruby fabricated into two different uh, gems the sapphire and ruby diamond has no common objects because it has a hardness of 10 which is the most um, hardest element on earth the diamond so ang hardness ay isang ability ng isang mineral to resist scratch the most scale of the mineral hardness is based on the ability of one mineral to scratch another mineral visibly, visibly. This most hardness scale was developed in 1800 by Friedrichs, Friedrich Mohs. Friedrich Mohs is a German mineralogist. He selected 10 mineral of different hardness as you can see in our table that range from a very soft mineral like talc to a very hard mineral like diamond. Most hardness is a measure of relative hardness and resistance to scratching between minerals. In our image, you can recognize that as you move up to the most scale, the hardness increases starting from one up to the hardest di diamond which has a hardness of 10. Next, we have the cleavage and fracture are used to describe how minerals break into pieces. Minerals are crystalline structures and breakage of minerals may take place in the weak parts of the structure. So if a certain kind of minerals or rocks forming minerals have a tendency to break the part that is weak can create cleavage and fracture so cleavage is a mineral um, uh, commonly if we recognize cleavage a mineral breaks along a flat surface or into sheets sheets kumbaga flat siya no parang ano siya yung a pile of wood or a pile of a sheets of paper just like that, as you can see in our image, cleavage. If we also recognize fracture, it happens when a mineral breaks with um, lots of jug edges. So in this, uh, unlike uh, cleavage that are that are formed into sheets or a uh, flat surface, fracture um, breaks into jugged edges, as you can see in our image. So cleavage is the tendency of a mineral to break along smooth plane parallel to zones of weak bonding. So kung saan yung mahina yung bonding niya, dun magkakaroon ng cleavage. Pero dapat uh, parallel siya or in a smooth surface, just like um, a flat surface or into sheets. So on the other hand, fracture is the tendency of a mineral to break along curved surfaces without a definite shape. 
So, irregular yung mga shape pag, nag pag nag-determine tayo ng fracture. So, these minerals do not have planes of weakness and break irregularly. Next, we have the um, crystalline structure. Crystalline structure, also known as crystal lattice, is the periodic array of the atoms. This is a unique arrangement of atoms in a crystal. So, in crystal form, some minerals that grow without being impeded by their environment. Develop characteristics of crystal shapes or crystal form that represent symmetry of the crystal structure. Meaning, parang, um, if, if we recognize a um, mineral, it has this asymmetrical um, shapes. No? As you can see, in the quartz, no, has an internal structure that has a six-sided hexagonal symmetry. So, yung mga dulo ng um, quartz natin, ma-recognize natin siya na kakaroon siya ng six-sided hexagonal symmetry. Yan yung karakteristik ng mineral in crystal form. As a result, quartz crystals commonly are six-sided. We have also the halite. Halite has an internal structure that has a cubic four-sided symmetry. Sa siyang cube, no? When we uh, describe cube, there's a four-sided geometrical figures. So, yan yung uh, nire-represent ng halite. As a result, halite crystals commonly are cube shaped. Next, we have the transparency or diapanity. It indicates that extent of light can pass through the mineral. That is transparency or diapanity. So the amount of light that able to pass through minerals determines transparency. Pag yung ilaw, no? It can passes through a mineral. Mm -hmm. Pag inilawan mo siya, no? Nagpapas yung ilaw niya dun sa likod. Diba? Sa front ka ng mineral nag um, flashlight. And then, um, dun, no? Papasok siya mismo dun sa katawan ng mineral at lalabas. Yan yung tinatawag na um, transparency, transparent. Light is able to pass through transparent uh, minerals. Translucent minerals partially let light pass through and opaque minerals or opaque do not lead any light through. Ito yung opaque, no? Yan yung opposite ng transparent. And, uh, walang um, light that can pass through a mineral. An opaque mineral is a mineral that does not transmit plain polarized light. Next, we have the magnetism. Magnetism indicates the ability of the mineral to attract or repel other minerals. Okay, as you can see, we have the images of magnetism. Okay, so magnetism is exhibited by some minerals. They are attracted to a magnet because of the movement of electrons, as you can see in our um, below image, no? yung electrons na move in their crystalline structure. So, crystalline structure, nandyan na yan sa mga minerals natin or sa mga rock forming minerals. They are also the reason why there is a movement of electrons. So, magnetite is the most common magnet magnetic minerals so you can see in our image we have the magnetite some iron sulfides and oxides become ferromagnetic they are attracted to a magnet also as a result of combined sulfur or oxygen ions 
freeing themselves from the iron. So, yung ions is an example of those um, properties that can attract one another. They can uh, form metallic bonding surrounded by free electrons as you can see in our image. They are being surrounded by free electrons and the attractions are being um, stated here in a covalent band or attracted by bind molecules. We have also the tenacity. Tenacity is the mineral's ability to hold its particles together or the resistance to stress such as bending, breaking, crushing, or tearing. If a mineral can withstand the or resist bending, breaking, crushing, or tearing, it forms the ability called the tenacity. So tenacity describes the reaction of the mineral to stress, such as crushing, bending, breaking, or tearing. Certain minerals react differently to each type of stress. Since tenacity is composed of several reactions to various stresses, it is possible for a mineral to have more than one type of tenacity. So we have a picture of how tenacity behaves as a mineral. The behavior of a mineral towards the forces that tend to break, bend, cut, or cross it is described by tenacity. So we have the types of tenacity. So for a sick tile, a mineral can cut with a knife. Example, the talc and graphite can also be cut using a knife. Malleable, that is also the behavior of being a malagkit, no? When we say um malleable is pertaining to being malagkit. Mineral flattens into shit by hammering. So the other term for hammering is pounding. Example, the silver and the gold. A brittle. Mineral uh, crumbles to grains or powder form when hammered so nagkakaroon ng pulbos pulbos na arrangement ng isang mineral pag uh, nagkaroon ng pounding o pag uh, a hammer dito we have flexible minerals can be easily bent example are the chloride elastic when a flexible mineral on being bent regains its original position as the bending forces is removed. Sample the Muscovite and the Biotite. Next, we have the luster. Luster shows how much light are reflected in a mineral. This depends on the brilliance of light used to observe the surface of the mineral. So, when you say uh, luster, it is an optical property of minerals. Why optical property? Because it is being used or observed in terms of reflection of the surface of the mineral. There are two main types of luster, the metallic and non-metallic luster. The intensity of the luster depends upon the amount of light reflected from the surface, which is generally related to the refractive index of the mineral. We have also the odor. The odor is a distinct smell of a mineral that is usually released from a chemical reaction manifested when the mineral is subjected to water, heat, air, or friction. So we have an example, the sulfur. Sulfur is generally odorless, but if it is, uh, when it is subjected to water, heat, air, or friction, a bright yellow mineral with a distinctive odor of spoiled eggs. Yan yung magiging odor niya. 
not to turn into bright yellow mineral with distinctive odor of spalled eggs. Parang baog na itlog. Yan yung odor ng sulfur. We have also the specific gravity. Specific gravity is a measure of the density of the mineral. It determines how heavy the mineral is by its weight to water. So, masusukat mo lang yung um, specific gravity ng isang rock forming minerals sa tubig. No? Ano yung weight niya pag nasa tubig siya. So, we have the uh, table, no? Rock type, for example. The igneous, no? They are the andesite, basalt, gabbro, granite, rhyolite. They have a different specific gravity. The sedimentary rocks like limestone, sandstone, shale, they have also different specific gravity. And we have also the metamorphic, metamorphic rocks. Then these, the marble in the slate. They have also different specific gravity. So what does specific gravity mean in minerals? So a mineral's specific gravity is the ratio of its mass to the mass of an equal volume of water. So pag merong um, actual mass, yung limestone na yan, no? I-divide mo yan sa mass ng tubig in volume. No?